Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate, JJ. Today we will continue on our Maxitronics 10-in-1 uh, project uh, lab. Uh, we're doing uh, the seventh circuit. Uh, the seventh circuit is a continuous wave transmitter. Um, now, I've learned a little bit about this. Uh, a continuous wave transmitter, it's an AM transmitter. It transmits on, uh, on the, uh, using AM uh, frequency. So it trans transmits in, in the AM frequency, which I'll tell you a little bit more about soon. Um, and uh, um, uh, yeah, it basically transmits a, a DC signal, which means that you can't hear it. It comes through as silence. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to be building a continuous wave transmitter. I'll pop you over the booth and put it together. Once it's done, we'll bring it over to the bench and we'll have a look at it under the scope. So let's get on with it. Here we are in the booth. So we're going to put together uh, our next circuit, which will be circuit number seven, the wireless CW transmitter. <laughs> this circuit is a single stage telegraph transmitter. When you press the key, energy from the transistor collector, the output element, is fed back to the transistor base, the input element, through the bar antenna, causing the circuit to oscillate at a high frequency. The high frequency energy radiates from the antenna into the air and can be picked up by a standard broadcast radio placed nearby. The transmitter frequency depends on the bar antenna and the variable capacitor. <clears throat> Turn on a radio and set it to a blank spot on the dial. Turn up the volume so you can hear a hiss from the radio. No radio station. Press down the key on the wireless CW transmitter and tune the variable capacitor in the kit until you hear a sound in the radio. Now you can practice the Morse code by keying your transmitter and listening to the radio. You can transmit to two or more radios this way so your friends can be listening to your messages. If the signal in the radio is too weak, connect a piece of wire to the anten antenna terminal. And uh, if we just uh, have a look at the next page, it should have the, uh, the, the schematic. Uh, and the wiring checklist. So that's uh, that's that there. So uh, <clears throat> let's pop you over to the uh, to the booth, and let's put this guy together. Now the first thing to do is to remove the hookup wire from the previous circuit, which was our one transistor radio. If you didn't see it, it was the third radio that we made. Uh, it was called the one transistor radio with diode. Um, and uh, <clears throat> if you want to see how that worked out, just check the video that came out before this one. Uh, I won't tell you uh, how things worked out, so you can go and find out for yourself. Um, there was th three uh, radio receivers that we did. We did the diode receiver, and then we did the one transistor receiver, and then we did the one transistor with diode receiver. And this circuit that we're putting together right now, this is a transmitter, not a receiver. Um, I haven't discovered what CW stands for. I think it means continuous wave, and perhaps they just mean by that that there's just a, a frequency. It's a, a, the idea with this particular circuit is to transmit Morse code, not to transmit audio, um, like with speech, but to transmit Morse code. So the CW probably just refers to like the like the DTMF, the dual tone multi frequency. That's a uh, this is not dual tone and it's not multi frequency, but single frequency, single tone. Um, all right. Well, here we are. So uh, there's only ah. Yeah, okay, it looks like seven wires, hardly any at all. Um, so, two to three. Two to three seems to be a bit of a staple. All of our, uh, all of our pro last three projects, and then this, the fourth one, started with two to three, just hooking uh, one part of that antenna coil up to the, the longer part of the antenna coil. Uh, so after two to three, we've got three to six. Uh, three to six, one, two, three, three to six. And then we've got 3 to 11. Where's 11? Over there. Okay, so that's uh, that's hooking the um, the aerial, number 3, up to the collector of the NPN transistor, which is number 11. And then we've got 4 to 26. 4 to 26, so 26 is power. 4 to 26. And then we've got five to seven. Okay, five to seven. That's just connecting the uh, antenna to the tuning capacitor. Five to seven. And then we've got 12 to 29. So where's 12? 12 is the emitter of our MPN. And 29 is our Morse key. Okay, great. So the key is used to, to key in a signal. I'll just close this door. It's a bit noisy out there. So, 
that was uh, 5 to 7, and then 12 to 29, and then 27 to 28. That's just wiring in the key to the power. And I think that's just about everything. It's got a note here about the uh, capacitor 100 PF between 5 and 10. What does it mean between 5 and 10? Uh, maybe it just means that you have to use the, the, the capacitor at this half, five, assuming that's zero and that's 10, then that'd be five and that'd be 10. And it says this is, it says 100 PF up here, uh, up here. It says 100 PF here, 100 PF. Um, but this tuning capacitor is more, it's more like 270. I think we measured it at 270. Oh, well, maybe if it's a linear capacitor and it's 270 picofarads max, then if it says that you want a capacitor at 100 picofarads and it's between 5 and 10, yeah, maybe. I don't know if it's linear or logarithmic, the um, the scale on this particular capacitor. I'm not sure. I don't know what, what's typical of a of a, um, of a, uh, a tuning capacitor, whether they're linear or exponential. So not exponential, but rather I think they call it logarithmic, which is basically the same thing. Uh, anyway, that circuit looks like it's put together. So uh, let's uh, pop it over to the bench and have a look at it. Here we are on the bench. So we're just going to be having a look at our... Uh, our uh, continuous wave um, transmitter. Uh, uh, it's 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 all powered up. I haven't got the power on, but the power's connected. Um, we'll be uh, using the radio to tune in the circuit. Um, but I wanted to go through a few things uh, first. Um, so uh, um, first things first, talking about uh, frequencies. So I, I did some research here. Um, audio uh, frequency um, is uh, roughly. And this is these are the extremes. It's about 80 hertz through to about 8 kilohertz or 8,000 hertz. Uh, that's the full range of 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 uh, voice that uh, humans can detect, as I understand it. But those are extremes. Uh, telephone quality voice. Uh, the numbers I got was 300 hertz on the low end to 3.4 kilohertz on the high end. So that's the kind of uh, uh, frequency that, that a telephone is designed to transmit for, for voice quality phone calls. So that's 300 hertz to 3,400 hertz, which is also known as 3.4 kilohertz, obviously. Now, as for AM frequencies, first of all, they're measured in, um, in, in kilohertz. Uh, it does get into the megahertz, but only just. Um, FM and shortwave, they're both in megahertz range. But AM, uh, in it's different uh, regionally. In the US and Canada, it's 520 kilohertz on the low end through to uh, 1,710 hertz. Uh, sorry, yeah, 1,710 kilohertz on the top end. So that's the range in, in US and Canada. In other parts of the world, including Australia, um, on the low end the, of the AM, it's 531 kilohertz, and on the high end, it's 1,602 kilohertz. So that explains the markings on this radio, where it says 53 on the bottom and 160 at the top, but then it says times 10. So all of those numbers are times, t times 10. Um, I learned a few things while I was putting this together. So I was expecting this circuit to have uh, two oscillators. I was expecting it to have the, the carrier wave and the signal wave. And I thought that there'd be a, a, an oscillator in here that gen, gen, used to generate a tone for transmitting the tone uh, to, the, to the receiver. But it turns out there is no such messaging tone. And the, the, the signal that this thing sends is what they call DC. So it's an amplitude modulated DC uh, uh, signal, which means basically that the ampl amplitude doesn't vary at all, it's in, and um, the, the consequence is on the receiver, when this is active, the way it sounds on the radio is silent, because it just, it doesn't, it doesn't oscillate, it doesn't send a tone, it just sends a, DC, a flat DC signal, which means that the, the amplitude modulation is just a, uh, it's just the carrier wave, and, and there's, uh, uh, so uh, that, that explains um, how, how it's likely that we'll hear this uh, when we plug it in. Now, I learned a few things. I I, um, I I popped myself over to the EEV blog forum um, and asked about how to um, probe this circuit um, uh, effectively. And I learned a few things. First of all, um, I've got to keep my probes, my oscilloscope probes, which look like this. Uh, it, it's recommended to keep them in 10 times mode so that attenuates the signal. Now, attenuation doesn't affect the frequency, but it does affect the amplitude. So essentially, this is like a 10 times reduction in uh, in amplitude on the signals that come through the probe, um, and that's being recommended to me. Now, when the probe's in 10 times mode, um, the the effective resistance, or perhaps you call it the impedance, I think it is just all resistance though, is 10 mega ohms, um, and the uh, capacitance is 10 pico. So that's when it's in 10 times mode. When it's in one times mode, the resistance is one mega ohm. So that's 10 times less than in 10 times mode. And the uh, capacitance is 100 picofarad. So that's 10 times more 
uh, capacitance on the on the on the probes. Now, when you connect this probe to any part of the circuit, it's it effectively introduces a 10 mega ohm uh, resistance across the two points, and it also introduces a 10 picofarad capacitance across the two points. Now, if I put that capacitance at the wrong place on this circuit, um, it actually affects the circuit, and um, in some cases, it will stop the oscillator, so the oscillator won't continue to oscillate. Now, we'll show you this uh, thing in a minute. So, um, I'm going to use two. So, this is uh, the other thing I learned, uh, and I didn't, I didn't know this. I kind of figured it out myself. Um, when you have multiple probes installed on your uh, on your oscilloscope, um, all of the ground leads are essentially connected together. So, um, that means uh, often you don't need to uh, actually include um, the. Uh, you don't have to plug all the all the ground leads in all the time. Now, apparently, that doesn't always work, and I don't know when it doesn't. But uh, the advice given to me was that um, you should just use uh, just use one of the um, uh, of the ground leads on your uh, on your scope, uh, and that was a beginner friendly advice for me. So there you go. Now, um, is there anything else to tell you? Uh, okay, so basically, um, there is no uh, there is the, the the signal that gets sent with this. Um, uh, transmitter is just a flat DC signal. Um, so I'll, I'll show you that actually. We should be able to see that very clearly. So let, let's put, uh, well first of all we'll power the guy on and then we'll put ourselves on negative here and I think that the collector is the right place to probe this circuit. Now if we press down there, okay that's good, we get a good consistent there and I'll just uh, put him in auto mode on the thing. All right, so you see that, um, that on, on the scope there, the yellow line up the top, that's our AM signal. That's that's what we're sending. Now, when I drop the uh, the, the key, then um, it just goes a bit noisy and there's not really anything to, to, to write home about. And every time I press it, um, it starts. Now, I have seen earlier when I was fooling with this, um, see, do you see it? Yeah, sometimes the oscillator doesn't oscillate. And I think that, like there, you see that's flat line and then it goes. So it's it's a bit finicky. Um, I'm... I'm my my guess is that it's related to the interference from the probe. So that ten picofarad um, capacitance across the, the the yellow probe, I believe, affects the circuit enough that in this case, like if you look at that, it flat lines and then it goes. So I'm, I, I can't really account for that. Now the other thing is, I got told that if I uh, if I just put my probe here, that should show me um, the output signal. So uh, let's just hit auto again. Uh, and hopefully it'll auto tune the uh, the blue line. Okay, so oh, okay, of course. Um, yeah, okay. So so that that uh, that blue signal that's that's just that's relatively flat. And uh, I wonder if I could put that over here. That'd make any difference. Didn't make any difference. All right, and that. Um, yeah, we, we literally disconnect the power to the circuit. So basically when it's powered, it's transmitting. And when it's unpowered, it's not transmitting. So um, let's get our radio on. And we'll put it down. Put it down on the low end of the spectrum here. Somewhere where there's not much going on. Sounds about right, doesn't it? And uh, <coughs> let's just wire in the... Uh, the keypad, so that's that's broadcasting there, we can see it. Now the other thing I might do, I'm going to hit measure, add, horizontal, frequency, done. So this is going to tell us the frequency on channel 1. And look at that, it's all the way up at 800, 860 kilohertz. So let's go up to 860 kilohertz on our, there we go. And you hear that, you hear that, that's silence. And we take this out, and it goes back to noise. And we press the key and it goes to silence. Release the key, it goes to noise. Press the key, it goes to silence. So, so we are uh, modulating a, a DC signal and a DC signal doesn't oscillate, so it sounds like silence. Um, now, uh, uh, that, that's, that's pretty much everything about this circuit. So um, I'll, turn the, I'll turn the radio off um, and uh, I'll, just, I'll just let him uh, continue uh, solid in the background there. So, um, yeah, okay. Well, uh, let me just throw you back over here. And uh, what have I done with my... Uh, try and stay in character. So, um, I told you about the AM frequency in Australia, 531 kilohertz to uh, 1.6 ki ki 
uh, megahertz actually, 1,600 kilohertz. Um, telephone quality sound, 300 hertz to 3.4 kilohertz. Uh, this particular continuous wave transmitter just transmits a DC signal, which sounds like silence. It worked. It worked perfectly. I, I definitely picked it up over there. Um, there's a name for uh, there's a name for the the type of uh, receiver that can pick up a continuous wave transmission, and uh, I'll put those details in the notes. Um, but that, that's that's mission accomplished. That's successful. So so we built our continuous wave transmitter. We got it transmitting to the thing. Uh, we were able to see the the, the actual uh, modulated signal um, on our scope. Uh, we learned a few things about how to ground and probe and, and how to set the the probes at ten times mode rather than uh, one times mode. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's mission accomplished. That's mission success. So uh, I'm going to uh, publish this video now. Um, after, after this was project seven, so the next video will be project eight. In project eight, we'll be building a patrol car siren. So that'll be some sort of oscillator that we can listen to. So uh, that'll be circuit number eight. If you want to see that, don't forget to click subscribe. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.